Hello and welcome to 3D6 in order, where today we're actually doing things a bit differently. We're going to actually make a character that someone might actually conceivably play. Let's start off by rolling the dice and see what our stats are going to be for the day. We're going to do three assign, because why the heck not do some free assign today? We got 11. That's not a bad number to start off on. I'd love to see some high numbers here. We're going to let the dice hit everything. I got a 1 there, but I also got another 11. So, going a bit down the average road this time. Um... That is a 12. Okay. We got a modifier there, at least. I'll roll three sets. That way we'll have a good selection to pick from. That's another 12. Hmm. Another 1. Like, I keep getting a 1, and then I get the same number. Wait. Oh, fuck. We're supposed, to, we're supposed to write these numbers down. Oh! That is a 15. That's really nice. At least we got something going for us. Come on! It'd be such a charm if I actually rolled higher than a 15. And what a charm it is. Um, that is a 16. Glorious. So we at least have a decent character. We're not going to assign anything quite yet, because we're at first going to go through the Character Path Generator. I like this thing a lot. Um, it's very great. It gives you basically some inspiration. Um, so let's start off. For this, you mostly need a d12. There's a couple where you need something else, but a d12 is really what you need more than most of it. Let's roll. We got a 2. Our character was born in a rural hamlet slash village. We're going to take away the role playing the stats. It's not important now. A rural. So that immediately dictates where our oh, Oops, I forgot that um, I need to keep this off to the side so I can access it. Um. So, born in a rural village. Okay, let's keep that in mind. What is our adult situation of this character like? Oh, I forgot. Uh, Don John here. Because we might as well make a name for this character while we're on it. I like Kaneka. Why is Caster there? We got Kaneka. Let's, let's go with Kaneka to Caster. That's a nice name. That's a good name I can get behind. Um, Kaneka Caster. Probably not a spell cast, because that would be a bit on the nose. Um, okay. Parental situation is a 12. They were apprenticed. Rural village. Okay. Who were they apprenticed by, though? That's a little D4. Four, okay. Um, I was going to go with, like, lower levels are, like, more brutish. So four would probably be, like, a mag mag magician or something. So they probably have, like, high intelligence. We know that much. Okay, let's cross that one off the list. There we go. That's a nice little setup. We just did two rolls, and we already have, like, a setup. Our character never knew their parents. Never knew their parents. There we go. So that caretaker's origin. Who is their caretaker? Well, we already know that they're their master. But could it have been their original parents? Oh, no, it's 11. Oh, no, they were sold or stolen at an early age. Stolen by a wizard. Like, he was just like, hmm, that's a great child. I must take this child. There we go. So we need to have, like, a setup. Uh, we're going to skip some of this. This is kind of a fun part. I'm sad we don't get to do this. And you know what? We'll roll this anyway. What are, What is their, their, their family's background? Currently, their family is part of a guild. Hmm. And their parents are alive and well. That's really nice. They just, just kind of got stolen. So no misfortunes. Let's roll the sibling table. 1d6, go! We rolled a 3, so we have 3 siblings. Three siblings? Um, okay. Let's roll some fates. Oh, wait, I gotta roll for the siblings first. Roll d12 for every sibling. Younger, old, and odd, even. 
Oh, no, wait. Oh, siblings are present. I have to roll for them. Oh, I rolled three. Okay, so that saves me a bit of a bother. Nine. So this is... Older brother. Another older brother. And finally... Older sister. I guess that's how they were stolen so easily. They're like the, the, the youngest child, so they didn't even notice. Hmm, now that's a good one. That's a good one. First one, lost touch. Next one is a nine, which is they hate us. There we go. Didn't care much for the youngest. We're just like, ah, I don't care. Ah, draw like I can get stolen, which is exactly what happened. Let's not put it in dexterity. Let's put a 12 in dexterity instead. Um, we'll instead put the 15. Maybe they're charming. Maybe they're a charming fellow. Like, they're a nice, charming... There's an, they're, they, they got charm to them. Maybe, no, 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 no. They'd have wisdom. Like, they'd be taught everything, and they're, they're still a bit charming. They're not too strong, not too... They just got, just got that wisdom to them, you know? Like, they were taught a lot of things, so they used their common sense. They know what's going on. Uh, they're a wizard. Um, and an apprentice. Iconic gear is a silvered... Wand dagger. That's a nice thing. It immediately gives them a tool against werewolves because they probably... Maybe their master was a vampire hunter. And they were like, I need a vampire hunter kit. Or wizard. Basically, someone who hunts... Like, the term vampire hunter comes from a, a class that for some reason exists for vampire hunter D. I like the idea. I like the idea behind that. Cool. Let's go to personal preferences. How did they grow up? What, what do they dress like? They dress conservatively. They dislike the attention. There we go. Uh, 11 for hair. Their hair is crazy. Never care much about self-care. That's unimportant. Mark. What marks this character? A scar. Ooh, maybe they got a scar from their first hunt. I keep using the wrong pronouns. Because I don't care, and I keep forgetting to register it in my head. Whatever. There we go. Now look at this. Just just with a little bit of like thinking. Our character has a lot going for them. We have a background. We know what they're from. They might be a bit like... Maybe I should go for like 12 constitution. You know? Mm, that'd be that'd be neat. Like let's go for this. For, like they're not too social. But they are pretty... They are pretty buff. You know? They got buffness going for them. We're playing the stats. X, X, X. Doesn't matter. Um, we'll just put a big X here. They got a silvered wand dagger. They're not too bad with the dagger either. Especially if they get weapon finesse. Um, unless you're playing 5e, in which case, hey, you're fine with the dagger. Um, let's move on down the line. So we already have their background. Don't need that anymore. Um, who was their master? Let's generate some master names. We got Grendin. Licken. Let's go with McKen. There we go. McKen. Grendin McKen. I like that. I like this wizard. Who's like, hmm, magical child. You're going to shoot some undead now. <laughs> I can already see like what their big revenge is going to be. It's going to be confront confronting their master. It's going to be this, I am the powerful wizard and you have defied me by running away with adventures. Their personal treasure is... Oh, a weapon.
Significant times of your life. D12, D12, give me something awesome! 11! Oh yeah, this is going to be radical. We got 11 magical events to worry about. Keepers, bloody creepers. This is going to be great. I got 11 to roll. First one is a tragedy. What tragedy has befallen them? We got a personal enlightenment. Actually, I should just roll some more d12s at once. We got another personal enlightenment over here. And we got two... That's just for sake of the video. Uh, cut this short. And then just add a windfall at the end. There we are. I mean, this is like the part you want to least manipulate, but... It oh, let's actually say I made an enemy. We get a friend, we get an enemy, we get some extra bonuses for being a cool guy. We have some good stuff, some bad stuff. We basically had it all. Maybe every... Oh, let's do Cupid Strikes, too. Let's, let's, let's do one of each. We'll get to roll the tables. Okay, so let's roll the tragedy. Our tragedy is... Dept. Oh, no! Then comes personal enlightenment. I like personal enlightenment because it's the stuff where you actually get some stuff. Like, mechanically. I used to like this the most, but now I'm like, man, you know what's better? Having a friend. Like, having someone you can send a letter to. And just be like, hello. We got a whopping nine. That's a magical ability we get. They learn to cast a conjuration spell. Okay, that's cool. Uh, let's roll the other one right away. A neat and tidy six. Skill improvement. Their skill improvement is... They learn no wisdom skill. Now let's roll for some friends. Friend, oh friend, who do I make? Friend, oh friend, what did I take? Our friend is an old enemy. Let's swap these around, then. Actually, no. What is their heft? Their heft is, they are a powerful individual. Enemy wizard. Uh, that's cool. I like that. Okay, let's roll for enemy. Who is this magical enemy? This enemy is... Authorities. <gasps> ooh, ooh, what kind of authorities are we dealing with here? What does the heft table say? They are a clan. What, what went on? Like, let's look at the, um, animosities. The animosities say we took advantage. Or someone took advantage. How bad are the feelings? The feelings are... Ignore. Cool. So what's going to be the last one? Who hates who? Oh, the feelings mutual. There we go. Oh, that's nice. I like that a lot. Windfall. I roll an 8, which is long lost someone. I roll another sibling. I don't want to roll another sibling. <laughs> I got Scruffy. Get a familiar of choice. You just, you just get a little buddy. Just get a little buddy. Who doesn't want to have a little buddy? Cupid strikes. Cupid says it was a Oh no, oh they found out dump you even they never found out. Oh no.
It led to her escape. That's what romance does to people. It makes them run away. And with that, we've rolled our character's backstory and their setup. Now, we already got a bit of a feel for them. They're, they were they grew up in a sheltered environment. Um, they're, they're trained by a powerful, mighty wizard. So what are we going to do for drawbacks? Well, they're not as social. There we go. They just got favorite enemy, which is not that big. So what is their big event? Their big event in their big lifetime is... Ooh, you know what? We're going to gonna roll some dice. We're going to flip a dice, and we're going to say... Even, uh, master, uneven, they go for their family. Even. So they go for their master. Ah, I like this. I like this idea of like a wizarding duel. There we go. Because that way it's nice. There we go. That's a nice way to, to to pump it up. But what if they? What if she lets them live? Well, I don't know. That's something. That's something for the GM to figure out. Will I play this character? Most likely. I actually really like this character. I really like what's going on here. We got a strong wisdom. We get another wisdom skill, so that clicks up nicely. Um, we get a new conjuration spell. So hey, extra spells for a wizard is always nice. Um, just strong intelligence. Good for a wizard. Good dexterity. Um, for what I roll, this is fine. Um, although I feel kind of bad about that bad stat that I didn't take. I really wish I should have taken that, because that would have made the, the charisma actually terrible, and would have made this a good character. Like, I, I rolled something bad, and then I forgot to write it down. Ugh. But it's so good, though, to have a bad charisma on a wizard. Be like, I'm socially awkward, because I grew up in a sheltered environment and was stolen away by someone. I never grew up with the kids and cadets. Oh, well, I like this character. Kaneka Caster. Or, no, Ken... 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 There we go, Kanenke. Kanenke Caster, apprentice wizard, with her silvered wand dagger. Stabby stabby. Hee hee hee.